Hello, tech professionals. Today is a very special live stream. First of all, it's been a while since I've been here. I actually have a special guest backstage. His name is Mike, and he is actually a social skills coach, helping technical professionals build social confidence in a setting. Perfect timing is COVID nineteen, where everyone is working remotely. So I would like Mike to speak for himself,、uh, being an author for four books as well as his podcast. I often forget to introduce myself. I'm just assuming that you guys know who I am. I'm Holly, and the reason why I'm speeding things up today, specifically, is that my Wi-Fi is very slow right now, so I don't want to cut off any content. I will leave all our both of our contact information at the very end in my YouTube video. So, Mike, with further ado, I would love for you to give an overview intro.、Um, A little bit about how you help technical professionals. Sure. Yeah, I'll keep this short and sweet because obviously, you know, we want to get into the question so everyone,、um, you know, can get a lot of value from our conversation here. But yeah, you know, to、uh, to make the the long story short, my name is Mike Mac Pinlack.、Um, I'm a social skills coach for STEM professionals. And how I got into this was,、um, you know, just just to solve my own issues. You know, as an immigrant. Um, I struggled socially when I was younger. You know, I was so shy back in high school that I actually ate my lunch in a bathroom stall. Not to mention, I worked as a structural designer on and off for about seven years. And if you know anything about, you know, like、uh, the the industry itself, you know, pe- people are paid based on their technical expertise, not on their ability to talk. Right. So I really struggled socially up until my early twenties. And、uh, yeah, you know, I got into this to help me、uh, connect with more people because you know I was sick and tired of feeling lonely. And that led me to、uh, starting a podcast of four years now. I've had、uh, I've had 150 interviews. I've authored、uh, four books. So if you want to check them out on Amazon, here they are: books on social confidence, first impression, conversation skills, and、uh, building your network. And these days, I I、uh, the last five years, I've been helping. Um, engineers, parents, and developers full time to help them improve、uh, their social confidence, so they can create more meaningful connections in every area of their life. So, Holly, that's、uh, that's that's about it. You know, I'm really excited to be joining you in this conversation, and hopefully, have some valuable tips for everyone tuned in. If we're meeting really for the first time. I do run a live broadcast every single week. Has it has been a challenge lately? I'm going to dive right into the question. In today's economy, a lot of my clients and prospect who's reached out to me via LinkedIn. Are all job seekers in the tech space, meaning engineer, senior engineer,、uh, up to director or VP level of engineering?、Um, with that in mind, they're asking very similar question: Is what is your best tip on how an introvert should pass a virtual interview? First, you know, with with social media networking, the most the same relationship building tips apply online、uh, as in offline. You know, meaning that you know you got to make sure that you're giving off. A great first impression. So your pictures really do make a difference. Make sure you've got a good headshot. You know, make sure it's well lit. You can you can go to a website called Photofeeler dot com. Again, it's Photofeeler dot com. That's a website that's gonna rate how you know、uh, credible or trustworthy you are、uh, based on your pictures. So you can kind of you know test different pictures that would give the best result. Also, make sure that you're able to tell a good story on your social media profile.、Um, you know, like make sure you. Are using descriptive words, right? You're not dry with your storytelling, so you're using,、um, you're engaging the senses, you know, by talking about how things、uh, made you feel、um, instead of just like you know delivering facts and data. And also, as far as、uh, networking is concerned, make sure you're very deliberate how you use social media, because I know, you know, for myself,、um, if if I'm not with, with my usage of social media, an hour, a couple hours can go by. And me get nothing done, right? So make sure that before you open your computer, you get you open your phone. Make sure you've got a clear purpose on why you're using social media. In this case, if you're looking for a job, make sure you're using social media to connect, right? So relationships, you know, you're, you're keeping in touch with with people that you know, and also you're you're looking、uh, purposely, right? You know, for people who could potentially connect you with decision makers to help you progress professionally. So yeah, those are those are my tips right there. So you can, you have new questions. Feel free to put it right into this live stream on YouTube. When I said myself and Mike, I meant Mike. This is all you.、Um, I have a <laughs> bit, <laughs> right. I have a bit of a different questions. I get more vocal about my passion and job responsibility during interviewed.、Um, call me an extrovert, extrovert or enthusiast. 
I think it takes serious seriousness away from high level jobs. And this is from a、uh, engineering leader. I try to control, but ultimately be myself. If any help you could provide relating to that. So with this one, you know, as far as storytelling is concerned, you know, especially if you're the kind of person who doesn't have a lot of experience interacting with people, a really good way to do this is to prepare. What you want to talk about ahead of time, you know, especially if you're not a naturally good storyteller, or if there is a way that you want to come across when you're telling your stories, you know, like it is a good idea to script out what you want to say in advance, and and you know, if you're able to,、uh, you know, just practice,、uh, you know, rep-、uh, saying your story out loud, right? And and if you have time, you know, like if you have some colleagues or some friends that you can practice in private, so you can you can get. Uh, you can get some repetition, and you can also get some feedback. That way, you know, by the time、um, you're in the interview, you know, like when 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 it really counts, you're able to you know convey yourself in a way that's intentional and that could increase the likelihood of potentially getting you the job. I will mention a little bit of your content on the books. It looks like a couple of folks are interested in that. Oh yeah, so basically, it's just、um, you know. It's basically like the four levels of what you need to do to thrive socially, right? So the, my first book is about improving your social confidence. So this is about overcoming your shyness, you know, improving your self-image,、uh, becoming more confident, raising your self-esteem, that kind of stuff. So that's what that book's all about. The second one, I'm sure you guys have heard of this before. You never get a second chance to make a great first impression. So the second book is is all of that, you know, talking about. How to improve your appearance so that you come across more credible, more authoritative, more attractive. So people take what you have to say seriously, right? You know, we we you know, like for example,、um, I've seen this in my own life too. You know, like the same person、uh, can be wearing two different clothes. You know, like one day he goes out, he's wearing a hoodie, and you know, with mustard stains and stuff like that. He'll be treated differently versus you know, like the next day if he's wearing a well-tailored suit and he's well-groomed. You know, so first impression really does make a difference. So I talk about different tactics on that, both online and offline. And then the third one, this is the biggest thing that I see、um, a lot of my students struggle with. They they tend to run out of things to say in conversation, and they have awkward silences. I wrote an entire <laughs> book on how to have effortless conversation. And then lastly. Um, you know, I'm a I'm a big believer of the saying in life, it's not just what you know, but who you know. You know, like one of my favorite quotes as well that I want to share in this live stream is、uh, is by Joanne Sotkin. She said that there's no such thing as money problems. There's only relationship problems because money comes from people, right? So your ability to build relationships with people and build your network is really what's going to determine your success and overall fulfillment fulfillment in life. And that's what the fourth book is all about. It's about building your network so you can build. Uh, you can create a world-class social circle both in your personal and professional life. So yeah, those are all the four books. I love it. I probably should have asked you that before we get started, but thank you for. Ah,、uh, yeah, no worries. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I think that's absolutely going to benefit a lot of the、uh, the viewers, especially feeling shy and being introverted. Um. Okay. Do you have any coping tips for introverts during interview? Perhaps tips on overcoming mental blocks. Um, that happened during the interview when the mind goes blank. Got it. So before I answer that question, I just want to define very quickly that、um, introversion isn't the same as shyness, right? Let, let me just like <laughs> clarify that real quick. So introversion is a personality t-、uh, is a personality trait, just like extroversion. So introverts typically are people who were charged by spending time alone,、um, and extroverts are people who. Uh, thrive, right? You know, and, and they they get more energy by talking to people. Shy people、um, basically are are those who are afraid of having social interactions. So introverts can be social as well, the same way that some extroverts can be timid, right? So、um, so to answer that question,、uh, if you're an introvert, you know, introverts have a tendency of、uh, of ruminating a lot. You know, they tend to be in their heads quite a bit. So my advice there is to have、uh, is to adopt a mindfulness practice. So you know, have a daily practice of meditation, journaling. You know, like by by being able to、um, quiet your mind and be able to you know, like when you journal, you know, you just write out ex- exactly everything that you're worried about. So you can analyze them on paper. You know, it's so much easier to、um, think more objectively when your mind is empty and you're able to calm yourself down and you can see the things that you're worried about on paper. That way, you can be more proactive to finding. A solution. So in that, so in this sense, you know, like if you are in this situation where you want to feel more confident right away, 
I mean, I hate to say it, but, you know, like the, the, the work should have been done prior to that, you know, like, and one of the best ways that I know to feel more confident is to focus on your positive traits, right? I, I also noticed that a lot of introverts tend to um, beat themselves up mentally. They tend to have negative self-talk sometimes, you know, they, they're very self-critical. So if you have that habit, you know, like right now, like, you know, definitely stop that and, and refocus uh, your thoughts on finding out your, uh, what's good about you, you know, focusing on your strengths and your positive traits. So that's my tip there. Um, I have a question about interview pool. Now being virtual, interview pool really means um, panel interview with multiple people in front of you. Um, yeah. Virtual interview, would you say is harder since it's video call or it's more difficult um, to read the body language of the interviewer? So with this one, I feel like um, you, you're, you know, the, the best way to win any game is, is to play offense, not defense, right? So do what you can to uh, prepare on your own. Focus on what you can control, right? You know, like you can't really control what other people are doing, you know? And that's where anxiety comes from when you're so worried about other people. The best thing for this is, is to just focus on you. So, you know, obviously like anticipate. And Holly, you, you and I talked about this on a podcast interview that we did recently, you know, like... I, anticipate all the questions that you're going to get ahead of time and do your best to prepare your answers. Right. And, and at that point you just have to trust that, you know, like you have the right experience and skill set, and that you've prepared how to answer the questions the best way you could. And at that point you just have to let things go and, and trust that if it's meant for you, it's meant for you. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. I agree. So I actually do have, let me go one more before I wish that we just got, thank you everyone. Okay. So nervous. I have, this is another questions regarding a pod interview. So I get a lot of similar, my clients and, and network are interviewing at Amazon or big top tier tech companies, Mike, and in this case, they're interviewing for a level four area manager position. Any tips for people manager that you would give differently for as far as individual contributor? I, I can't speak about nervousness. And again, typically, like when we get nervous, you know, it, it's just the fear of the unknown, right? You know, like typically when we're afraid, you know, like when, when we feel that anxiety when we're nervous is because we're, we're not um, aware of what's going to happen. And, and again, you know, that's just life, right? You know, like li life is just we're going to be thrown into areas and, and situation, situations where we're not familiar with it. So the best thing to prevent nervousness is to just mitigate as much of the risk as you can and to identify as many of the unknown variables as you can, right? So, you know, to help you with this, just like figure out like exactly what makes you nervous. You know, are you nervous because you don't feel qualified? Are you nervous because you don't know the questions you're going to be asked? You know, are you nervous because you know, like this is a job and, and, and it means a lot to you, you know, like whatever the case may be, just like write that down on paper and then ask yourself, is this something that I can do something about? Yes or no. And if yes, then, then, then do what you can to prepare it, prepare for it. And if not, then you just have to let things go. Right. You know, like life will be so easier once you're able to identify what's within your control and what's outside of your control. Mm -hmm. And once you train yourself to focus your energy on things that you can't control, then yeah, you'll be less nervous. And also practice, right? You know, again, I've said this many times in the past, most people who are nervous and, and scared just lack awareness and practice. So just do your best to um, anticipate those questions and conversations ahead of time and prepare for them in advance. Cool. Um, I have a question from Sweaty and she's asking, is there a way to get a soft copy of your books? Are they available online? Is there a way to get to get a what? Sorry, a an electronic copy? copy? Are the are a soft copy of your books available? Uh, yes, they're available as paperback and as a Kindle version. So if you type in my name on Amazon, I know it's a little bit uh, hard to spell, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just just make the effort. Um, but yeah, if you type my name on Amazon, you should be able to find all my books there. You can also find them on my website. Go to socialconfidencemastery.com. For more questions from Mike, I see that there is a couple questions coming in relating to Amazon. So I'm, okay, I am back. So guys, thank you for being here, all of you. Um, Prince, hi, how are you? Thanks for coming in. Ranja, uh, Diana, we have um, Gabriella, we have Mashira, we have Yoshi. Uh, my apologies if I can't pronounce the name correctly. Um, and I know a couple of you guys are hiding in the back room. So this is a perfect shyness introvert uh, for you to be as well. So 
don't feel shy of putting up your questions. Mike will be here for another five minutes or so. Uh, during this time, I wanted to answer some of the questions that are coming in relating to why Amazon. I get this questions asked a lot from many of you. Um, the best way to answer either is my why Amazon, why Google, or why any employer at all is one. Um, I'm like I'm asking you this why? Why do you want to work for that employer? Right? What the employer wants to hear is don't give them the same thing as what every candidate has giving them as because Amazon is the biggest company in the world. They're the most innovative. Everyone says that. So I would ask you to do your due diligence. Do your homework to be original and your employer wants to hear, is it that specific project or team that you're interested in? Why? Amazon is so broad. Is it Kindle? Is it retail? Why is it? What core of the business are you most intrigued with? So that's how I would answer the question. The answer, I can coach you around in diving deep as to why that certain employer. Okay. And she says, if you have not worked in a large scale enterprise like Amazon, Google, but have relevant experience as a tech recruiter, then how do you come out with behavioral questions and answer? Well, at the end of the day, recruiting is recru you have to be able to give answer that is relevant to a uh, recruiter as far as the job functionality. So anytime when you answer question, you should immediately think about the largest scale and scope. The more complex problem you have solved as a recruiter or any position, that is the one thing that would make you stand out and differentiate you from all the other candidates. Answer your question. You don't have to specifically work for a big organization going to a big organization. I, for one, I was an agency recruiter when my first gig Google landed on my lap. You just have to speak to your experience based. How do you rock as a recruiter? Talk about candidate experience. Talk about what makes you excited. Talk about how you add value and what is the end result. I hope that answers your question. Let's go with, this is a question from Diana and Diana says, Mike, was there one pivotal moment for experience where you said enough is enough? I need to do something different and be more outgoing. The catalyst of what made me um, really change was I was just tired of being lonely. You know, like I, I, start, I started my journey when I was 17 as an immigrant, when I moved to Canada. And back then, I was working a lot of low-level jobs. Um, I, I, I was spending a lot of time at home on the weekends. I just didn't have a lot of friends. And I was just sick and tired of feeling sick and tired. You know, I, I, was, I, I didn't want to feel lonely anymore. I, I, I would look at other people and I'm like, man, like, how come they have friends and I don't have friends? You know? Or like, I would see a couple you know, and be like, wow, how, how nice would it feel to, to be in a, in a loving relationship like that? You know, like, I just started to notice what I was missing out on. And, and that, really, that's what made me um, motivated to retake charge of the uh, educating myself around this topic. You know, sometimes it, it's so easy to procrastinate on, on the thing that we don't want to do just because we don't have enough information around it, right? Like it seems so, you know, the whole the whole uh, journey se seems more daunting if you don't understand it. So the more you can wrap your head around what skills you need to develop because at the end of the day, like improving socially, you know, it, it's just a it's just a series of skills that you need to develop, right? You know, like you know, those are all individual skill sets that you need to develop. And once you once you identify that, like, oh, like this is all I need to do, then the whole thing seems more matter. Welcome. Like Mike, you're getting popular here on this channel. <laughs> oh, nice. Thank you guys for those who have just um, recently joined. Let me scroll down here. Lynn says. Would you say that since Amazon gives you the structure of the interview and even the topics, they will ask you that this makes the interview even more difficult? No, I don't think so. I think, you know, um, if you have followed me, so I would focus less on the type of questions that are being asked and more on identifying yourself, what you're bringing on the table and added value. And if you take a look at my Amazon Leadership Principle playlist, I have at least two most commonly asked questions on there. I would say try to answer that with my star methods and look at my, my star videos on there as well. Get another opportunity that will bring out a different set of skills or passion that you will learn about yourself where you will be energized all over again. And I think this is just a hump that we're going through. And this is for everyone that's tuning in right now. When the interviewer asks you to provide an example for a behavioral question, should we stick to only technical environment example or could it be an example from life? 
always, always, always work related example. Maybe you're having a drink off the business clock and someone's trying to get to know you on a business level and in an interview setting, hands down, always professional. Uh, from Danielle. Hi, Danielle. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I am an incoming solution architect intern at Amazon this summer and was wondering if you have any tips on being a successful remote intern at Amazon. To be honest, diligent as they are as a corporation will set you up with an onboarding buddy. That's an Amazon thing to help you get up to speed to speak on behalf of your future hiring manager or your direct manager that they will make sure that you're being set up to be successful. We have one from Alma. Hi, Alma. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, my interview is tomorrow. Wish me luck. I'm like, good luck, everyone. Uh, I, I have to say, when I start creating content is because I genuinely love to help individual my time as a recruiting leader and my time as a recruiter in general. I did not expect that um, for everyone who's reached out to me, uh, are interested in hearing advices from Amazon. I heard you all loud and very, very clear. I will continue to pump out content to help you get jobs for Amazon, but please keep in mind, this is for all companies, all size, shapes, and form. I will continue to bring on great guesses such as Mike on different topics. Is it fine if your example is work related, but not from the same role on to relevant to the role? Okay. Anytime when you answer a question, it has to do with the role, the role and the scope. If you don't have the ex example, open up the dialogue to the interviewer and say this, well, actually I have not had that, um, experience yet, but would you be open in hearing something similar? So I would go that route. Let me, Absolutely. let me bring Mike back so we can say goodbye. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Mike. We'll see you until next time. Okay. Take care. Bye. See you guys. Morello says I am an experienced software engineer and I really want to join Amazon. It's actually my, it's actually my dream. Could you help me out? Well, as an Amazon or any company at all, it's, you know, when you're looking, it's funny when you're excited about the company that you're applying to, please, 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 please guys, make sure you do your research in the role, the team and learn more about the environment before you do so. Just like any company, you want to make sure it is a right fit. Make sure you look at the position that you wanted to apply to. Go to Glassdoor and you can turn the negative feedback from current or past employer and ask the interviewer. Make sure that whatever issue or problem they have with, with interviewing you and the team members that the problem has been fixed or they have some kind of solution for you. Okay, that's a really big tip that I wanted to share with you guys right now. Don't get yourself into one bad job to another bad environment without knowing what you're getting yourself in. Pia says, I fell three times. I'm still not giving up though. However, I did pass the assessment and phone interviews. Are you a software engineer? This sounds like a software engineer. Does this mean maybe my tech skill could be, uh, could be enough? Um, you understanding more about the position that you're applying to before you even take the online assessment. Online assessment is typically for software engineer who pass um, the basic coding fundamental, which is your, your favorite coding language. Usually it's Java or C, C++ or Python, assuming that you're... I am so happy to be talking about tech with you guys. Uh, so with that said, you need to understand what the role is calling for. And when you're answering the questions, generally you have about an hour to answer technical questions. If you feel like you're asked, I would always ask for fee. So I would do that. You know, I've been a recruiter half of my life. And for me, I would like to be transparent with my kids. The thing is I will not keep on applying to the same job or same position title until I get more feedback. Amazon or not, company usually wait till roughly about a year, if not longer, before they re-interview you. Good job on that. Does this mean maybe my tech skill could be enough? Well, it, again, it really depends. Although I like to think that uh, an environment like Amazon, the tech bar should be the same across all the team, but that's not necessarily the case like a retail. I know that they're very heavy with obviously front end technology or more full stack along the Java side of things uh, versus like AWS, poss possibly on Python or C++ and as well as devices. Amazon business. Oh my God, that's my baby. So when I started at Amazon, um, five, six years ago, I actually moved from San Francisco to Seattle for Amazon. Um, I took on a group called smallpots.com. They're now Amazon B2V. 
uh, very close with that business group. I love it. That's actually one of the best group awards that I have ever worked for. So fingers crossed. I really hope that you get a chance to work with uh, some of the good guys that uh, that I did in my past. The on-site interview is exposing more to your entire fundamental background, not just coding, but for instance, um, systems architecture, systems design, object-oriented design. So you have to do really well as a full-stack engineer for any of the position at Amazon specifically. Okay. It's been very difficult. Um, the Wi-Fi is really weak. I'm surprised that I'm still broadcasting after 40 minutes. Coming up, you're very nervous about the bar racer. <laughs> ah, the famous bar racer. Okay, this is the last question. Um, why is the bar racer included in the interview and what is the ideal behind it? Excellent question. I get asked a lot about the bar racer. Well, first, let me tell you what a bar racer is at Amazon. A bar racer is some that are giving their unbiased opinion. Here in a work culture, oftentimes we have unconscious bias without even knowing. We like to hire people that we work with in the past before, even though we haven't worked with for like 10 years, right? Um, and you could work for, for a smaller company or startup, and then now your buddy or your former manager is at Amazon. It's a total different environment. So a bar racer's job is to evaluate the interviewer just if this person don't know anything about you, not for his or her team, and giving their unbiased um, feedback. Again, this is not just Amazon, but because it was structured so well at Amazon, specifically mid-level and startup, and the exact same thing. Now, they didn't use the word bar racer, but they do have someone that isn't from the team, okay? And that's actually a good thing for a fair evaluation of your background to see if you're a good fit for the organization and not just for that specific team. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification. Thank you so much for your time, guys. Have an awesome week, and I will talk to you guys next week. Bye, everyone.